How can we break this deadlock? What factors can we bring into the negotiation? Because she, she always asks me to give her a price. Yes. So I, I don't want to pay her too much. No. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, what would be beneficial to you? Um, you're buying a truck. What would be also beneficial to you as a truck buyer? What about, because she's selling the truck to go to Florida. Yeah. So what other things might she have that we could use to bridge the gap in the negotiation? What maybe she could do is to give you her client list. Mm -hmm. Because her client list means that you can create more contracts. What other things might she have that could be beneficial to you, the buyer? What other things might the truck seller have that could be useful to you, the buyer? Maybe she has some spares. Uh, maybe she has some petrol or fuel that she could let you have for a discount because if she is moving away, she has no use for it. Her truck is in excellent condition, so she's had a good mechanic or engineer. Maybe she can let you know who the mechanic is so he can fix your bad truck and that has some value for you. Maybe you could help her move to Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Move her down there. Uh, free, mm. free. Um, just to take me to Florida yeah. freely. <laughs> yes. Not freely, but to help bridge the gap in the negotiation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you could move her down to Florida. Mm -hmm. What are, What do they grow in Florida? Which Florida? Yeah. So in Florida they have citrus fruit. Mm -hmm. So what you could do is move her down to Florida, and then you could load up your truck with oranges, and bring them back and sell them because if she pays you to take her down to Florida the return journey is free so you could bring into the negotiation moving her. She has a, a yard that she's running her business from. Now if Maybe, she's going yes. to Florida she has no need for this so what you could do is sell it for her. Mm -hmm. So there are many things that you could bring into the negotiation. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at some theoretical situations. You um, have 56,000 available to buy this, uh, 55,000 available. Instead of paying 40, which you want, you could pay 50,000 and in return she could give you the truck and maybe the spares and the petrol and the client list because then you get value to make up the 10,000 extra that you're paying and maybe the value that she gives you is worth 15,000. Mm -hmm. You could sell the truck maybe not for 50, but for 42. Mm -hmm. Because you need 40,000 to clear the bank debt and you want some money to help you go to Florida. Yes. Now, for the other 8,000, you could maybe get some shares in her business. Yes. And then if yeah, she employs you, exactly a partner mm -hmm. And then she employs you as an agent and a partner in Florida mm -hmm. to help get some business for her. Mm -hmm. So that way you have two interests. One, the business grows, your shares are worth more. Mm -hmm. Two, you earn more money as an agent or a commission. So there are several opportunities to break the deadlock in negotiation mm -hmm. by bringing in all of these other items. Wudi 而他取名为无敌，究竟是自卫无敌，还是我们一般意义上所说的打遍天下无敌手呢？还是让我们一起来听一听Peter Hamming他自己是怎样解释的。We say um, negotiation without any enemy. What we mean is no competitor, because Keras is the first organization to research negotiation. The only product we deal with is negotiation. We don't do sales training, we don't do presentation, we don't do time management. So we are a one product company. No other company is specialized. So we have no competitors, we have no enemies in negotiation. We are the number one negotiating company. <laughs> 其实谈判总是与人有着千丝万缕的关系，而说到底，谈判它不仅仅是一种现象，一种行为，它更是一种创造价值的双赢哲学。应运而生的卡洛斯无敌谈判。
，他的理论和技巧是否真的名副其实呢？他究竟神奇之处又在于何处呢？相信电视机前的观众朋友，通过我们今天的节目呢，已经领略到了他其中的风采了。